This week on TGC News, I'm breaking down my trip to the Big Three East and more. The Advanced Special Operations Bag from Ari Factor Tactical is the definition of versatile. Featuring a quick access fight pocket, an RFID blocking pocket, a wide opening main compartment, seven mesh pockets on the inside, tons of molly and velcro for attaching gear, removable backpack straps, concealable duffel straps, 1000D Kodura exterior, and a waterproof bottom, all wrapped into the size of most carry-on luggage. Get 10% off your entire order at refactortactical.com using the code TGC10. Welcome back, my name is John Patton, and this week we're taking a look at my trip down to Florida to the Big Three East media event just outside Daytona Beach. Big Three is all about bringing together a bunch of manufacturers and media people and putting them on a range to check out the latest and greatest. This was actually my first year, but as I understand it, this was also the largest turnout since they started the event several years back. It was a really interesting mix of companies, you know, large and small. Glock was there, DPMS and AAC were there, Faxon was there, my friends at Kinetic Dev Group were there. I mean, overall, we saw representation from over 30 brands. There were also a lot of gun writers and video guys. Tim from Military Arms Channel, the crew from VSO Gun Channel, people from the Firearm Blog, Shotgun News, Guns and Ammo. Again, a really great mix of people. I think the biggest thing that I took away from the event that started out as a writer's only kind of thing is that people are paying attention to the newer forms of gun media now more than ever. Seeing the big manufacturers at an event like this means that they're realizing that times are changing. And I gotta be honest, I'm freaking pumped to be a part of that change. Since I try to keep this show pretty concise, let's rattle off some highlights from the event. Geisley and ALG brought out some new optic mounts that were cool. The DPMS G2 rifles are way better than the first gen. The IWI Jericho pistols have way more muzzle flip than they should. Hilux optics are impressive for the price. Faxon's new 308 is pretty damn cool. The new AAC modular 45 can has a lot of potential. I can't wait for Zenith to start selling their rifles here in the States. And last but not least, I wanna give a shout out to Tactical Walls because even though you guys have seen their stuff all over, I think it's important to mention that Tim and Chris are some of the most genuine guys that I've met in recent years and that just adds to the cool factor for their company. Now, on to the rest. <laughs> And in more Big 3 highlight news, let's take a look at one of my favorite products from the event, the OSS Modular Suppressor. I've seen this thing around for quite a while now and never had the opportunity to actually try it firsthand. From the outside looking in, they're really off the beaten path of suppressors with their end cap design and the hard angles that you rarely see on such a device. The most interesting things about these cans is the way they manage gases coming out of the muzzle. I mean, suppressing a gun is all about controlling that rapid expansion of gases, exiting the muzzle, and then cooling them down. Normally, this is done with baffles of some sort. They typically are in a straight line and the gas moves forward out of the gun. OSS has done away with traditional baffles and use a system of channels to run the gas back and forth within the can before exiting, which leads to really really interesting results. These things have almost zero blowback. That's a huge problem with most rifle cans. If you're shooting rapidly, your eyes are getting douched by tons of gas blowback. Well, OSS has almost completely conquered that. Just watch. Are you kidding me right now? This system, however, is not without its drawbacks. Because of all the channels and material inside the suppressor, these cans are significantly heavier than others on the market. And on top of that, the price is about six to seven hundred dollars more than other cans. That's substantial. So while the performance of the OSS cans is incredible, the cost-benefit ratio is still way off for most guys. I had heard about Definitive Arms from my buddy Tim from Military Arms Channel for a while now, but never really had the chance to shoot the guns or meet the people behind the brand. Well, Big Three gave me such an opportunity. Definitive Arms specializes in building top quality AK pattern rifles and doing some really interesting things with them. Most notably, their Magwell system that allows an AK to take AR-15 magazines. Something like this can kind of be a nightmare because the guns are so different, but They've pulled it off. They feed reliably and even lock open on the last round. 
they had a 6.5 Grendel prototype at the event, and they were kind of dialing that in. And i got to be honest, it was a pretty soft shooter. I love the blend of platforms like this. You take an old-school Russian gun and blend it with a magazine for an American gun, firing a cartridge designed by a British guy for an AR. That's so cool. And Definitive also has an AK that takes 9mm Colt mags. Yeah, a 9mm AK. That's awesome. The other thing that's impressive about Definitive is their attention to detail and quality. I had long conversations with Chase Siskel, the owner, and he told me that he personally inspects every single gun that leaves their shop. That's almost unheard of from a firearms manufacturer. It's not every day that you meet a craftsman like Chase or see such high quality AKs, but I was genuinely impressed by everything that they have to offer. This week's friendly fire question is from Justin Call on the TGC Facebook page, and he asks, what type of ear pro do you use? This is a nice and easy one, guys. I've been using the Howard Late Impact Sports for years now. They're nice and slim, and because they're electronic, you can actually hear what people are saying at the range and have a normal conversation without screaming. However, I've been considering other options after being on the range for the better part of two weeks during my road trip. I mean, the comfort levels were just not there for extended wear periods. That being said, I'm asking you guys, what kind of ear pro do you use? Post the answer down in the comments below. And if you want your question answered right here on the show, you can post that over on facebook.com slash the gun collective or post it on Instagram and Twitter using hashtag friendly fire. The Kinect QD M-Lock mounts from Kinetic Development Group offer the fastest and simplest way to get your M-Lock attachments securely fastened to your gun. With three slot Picatinny and bipod mounts currently available, and three more versions coming soon, you'll be sure to find the mount for your needs. To get 10% off your entire order, use the code TGC10 at KineticDG.com. And on hashtag not a review, we are taking a look at the SR5 bipod from AccuTac. To my knowledge, there aren't many good bipod makers out there, so I was eager to check this thing out. The overall design is unlike anything else on the market right now. It's one of those things that just kind of looks cool. <laughs> Weighing in at a hefty 20 ounces, this thing is certainly built to take a beating. The stance on the SR5 is nice and wide, and the adjustments are super simple. You just pull down on the feet, and the spring-loaded legs and locking lever hold everything in place. I also think the angle adjustment is pretty interesting as well. Instead of the push button style like an Atlas bipod or no adjustments like the Harris, the SR5 is done by pulling the entire leg down and moving it into another slot on the base. It's a pretty cool concept. I do have a few concerns, however, about how it'll behave in the dirt and sand, and I really wish there was some sort of side-to-side -side movement as opposed to just canting but since this is not a review, I'll be keeping my eye out for someone to get really in-depth with this thing. It's certainly not a cheap bipod by any means at $235 MSRP, but it's always great to see people coming at things from a new angle. To learn more about the SR5 bipod, be sure to click the link in the description to go to Accutac's website. That is it for this week's show. Guys, you know what to do if you enjoyed the episode. And if you didn't, let me know down in the comments below so we can talk about it. Do not forget to subscribe. You won't want to miss a single week. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Hey, did you watch last week's show? Or maybe the one before that? And did you subscribe yet? You need to do that. Click right here to subscribe. Do it now.